Whirlpool is back in action and rolling into Ascot. High summer in the UK. The weather's not too clever, but it's great to be joined once again by on the far side, John Blance, ace Sky Sports Racing analyst and front and centre again of the Racing Post, Maddie Playle. Welcome to both. Let's go to you first, John. This is a sensational weekend's racing at Ascot. What's the one thing you're most looking forward to? Well, it's uh, King George, a bit like the days of your, Graham, uh, in the sense you have got two top-class three-year-olds uh, taking on really high-quality older horses. It's a race that over the last sort of, 10 or 15 years might not have uh, seen a renewal like this, but we're really looking forward to it uh, this time round on Saturday afternoon. Maddie. Yeah, it's got to be the King George, hasn't it, guys? Um, fantastic race for, for a pure racing fan. You're getting everything you want, those champion three-year-olds taking on the older horses. And uh, the love of mine, Pile Driver. Can't wait to see him back at Ascot, where he's unbeaten over this course and distance. Horses at the stars, but the Tories back at Ascot. He's seven each with Lester Pigger in King George wins. Maybe Frankie can get an eighth in this year's King George on Emily Upjohn. But we have eight contests of skill and science to look forward to this weekend. The first is the 115 UK time. It's a long title. The Greatwood Charity 25th anniversary British EBF Crocker Bull Teal Maiden Stakes. That's the first job of the weekend done. It's an interesting race, but it's a difficult one. Let's have a look at the runners and riders down the card. One of the significant stats here is the Hannon Stable have a tremendous record in this race. Richard Hannon Jr. has won six of the last eight renewals, and this time he saddles a newcomer in Time Bar. Keep an eye on him. But down the card, Al Jazeer showed plenty of promise first time. Likewise, Appellant Fire Demon is a very well-bred newcomer. Likewise, he's got game. Indian run shape nicely first time. King of Riches has a good pedigree. Kodiak Thriller was an eye-catcher at Windsor. And down the card, we have Time Bar. And last but not least, Welcome Dream. Don't have any video clues here, but let's start with talking about this horse who ran so well at Windsor, John. Kodiak Thriller, he missed the break, he was green, but the penny seemed to really drop late on. Certainly did. My commentating colleague John Hunt said we'd be doing very well to get competitive after that slow start, but he did get very competitive. He almost won. He reeled off two sub-11 sectionals in the closing stages, uh, and obviously here at Ascot, uh, emphasis definitely on the stamina down the straight six furlongs. I think he's going to be picking plenty off in the closing stages, and he's on top for me. Yeah, jockey, William Buick, that looks a good booking. Maddie, any number of possibilities here. Which one do you like? So what I find interesting, Graham, is four of these who have raced, which isn't all of them, uh, have racing post ratings of 77 on their debut. So there's really not a lot to split them. I like appellant for Charlie Fellows. Probably not known for his two-year-old uh, prowess, but this horse ran a really nice race at air on his debut to finish second. He was very green. I think he strikes me as a horse who's going to improve plenty for that first start. And you could get a bit of value about his price as well. Hard to know how the market will flow here, John. But when you see a start like that, Richard Hannon's won six of the last eight. The Hannon family, including Richard Senior, have won seven of the last ten eight of the last ten actually this is a, a strong statistical trend time bar isn't necessarily bred to be a whiz bang two-year-old by time test no and there's no sales data either because he's a home bred so it's interesting to see how he goes only a fool would leave a hand and horse out of this race but i have left the hand and horse out of this race so i mean it's interesting to see how he gets on but i think you've got to stick more with the form that you know yeah i'm doing that fire demons a very well-bred horse for andrew balding and ashim murphy yeah he's in my numbers and as a judmont bred you have to take him incredibly seriously He's got connections who know what it takes to win races first up, time up like this. Uh, the market will guide us with him. Market will guide us here. Whirlpool market should guide. John, your numbers for race one? Yeah, going to go with Kodiak Thriller on top. And then I've got Kingdom of Riches, who hasn't run, but uh, uh, fetched 220 grand at the Breeze Ups. Uh, that was uh, quite uh, something. So he's interesting uh, for uh, Rafe Beckett. I like Al Jazeera as well, who lost a shoe but ran on well at Newbury on debut. And then I've got Appellant Maddie's uh, in for fourth. Yep, yeah, number two, Appellant for me on top, followed by three, Fire Demon, ten, Time Bar, Graham, we spoke about Richard Hannon, and seven, Kodiak Thriller, rounding me up. Hard to be confident in race one on Saturday, but I am going to go seven, three, two, one, Kodiak Thriller, caught the eye at Windsor. I hope you can do so again in race one on Saturday. 
Welcome back to Ascot. Going to look at race two on King George Saturday. This is the Bateau London Princess Margaret Stakes, a group race, 1,200 metres, two-year-old fillies. It can throw up a very good horse, Russian Rhythm, Lady of the Desert, last year's winner, Lazoo. Let's have a look down the car. Dazzling Star was very good at Newmarket last time. We've got Luna Shine, who could creep under the radar here. And further down the card, Symbology was very well backed first time at York. We've got one galloping clue that we need to look at here. It's Royal Ascot form, fifth and sixth in the Albany Stakes. The two fillies in question, Pretty Crystal in the yellow colours and Colmat in the purple. These two fillies ran very well. No real excuses, John. Didn't need any. They uh, put up a solid performance apiece in a pretty good race. Yeah, they did it. It was a pretty strongly run affair. They were both a little bit back in the run in the early stages and have come home powerfully. And if you look at uh, previous runnings of the Princess Margaret Stakes, certainly recently, hold-up horses are generally what you want. It's a long way for those two-year-olds to get, certainly those that are on the pace. So I think both of these can go in the numbers for me. Of the two, Pretty Crystal did more earlier on and still stayed on well. So I'd have her over Comat, but they both go in. Are we looking for Ascot form or something else yeah, Mary? I'm looking at something else. I'm actually looking at York uh, and Symbology's debut. As you mentioned, well back, Graham, for a trainer who hadn't had a great start to the season in Clive Cox, but he unveiled a really nice two-year-old at the Newmarket July meeting the other week. And he's got another one here, Symbology. She was a little bit clueless in the mid part of the race, racing out on a flank, didn't probably get the best run through in terms of education. But in the end, it was all class and she was a dominant winner. I think she's definitely going to improve. These conditions should suit her too. She's a half to El Caballo, a very talented sprinter. So she's got a lot in her favour. John, Dazzling Star, the good old in Philly, didn't look anything flash first time, completely different proposition second time at Newmarket. Yeah, nice uh, step up in terms of that. The Charlie Appleby Yard have been a little bit sort of hit and miss at times this season, so there might have been an excuse for that bad first run. Haven't got her in the numbers. She could probably run quite well. She will be pressing the pace. Interestingly, the two horses I had to, to, to definitely be on the speed are out, so there might not be as much pace as I thought in this race. She's not in, but I might regret it. I think the best bred filly in this race is number seven, Luna Shine by Kodiak half-sister to group one winner Anne Mart and she was commanding first time at Thirsk. Don't be misled by the official ground description that day. They called it good. It was definitely soft. So the rain we've had here at Ascot will suit her. I quite like that filly, but let's get some numbers, John, for the Princess Margaret. Well, I don't want to worry Maddie too much, but I'm a symbology for a symbology fan as well. I thought she did run very well at York, and this is a, a better test for her style of running here uh, than it was on the Knaves Meyer. Pretty Crystal and Comat in for second and third, and Sacred Angel as a horse who might be on the speed and might be able to pick up a scrap or two, but I do like symbology. Maddie? I'm abandoning the Albany form, so we'll find out if that pays or not. Symbology, number 11 on top, followed by seven. Luna Shine, two Dazzling Star, and one Cry Fiction. Got pretty good form, a listed race second last time. Yeah, same top two, but in a different order for me. I think Luna Shine, number seven, type of filly who might be overpriced in the whirlpool here. 11 Symbology, look pretty good at York. Eight Pretty Crystal, solid Ascot form, and two Dazzling Star in the Bateau, Princess Margaret. High time, we had a look at race three on Saturday at Ascot. This is the Longines Valiant Stakes. Take note, this is the round mile rather than the straight mile. We have some good fillies in opposition. Amena is top of the card. Loads of potential there. Random Harvest has good course form. Further down, Caddo Bell is an unbeaten Irish raider. And Thornbrook was a good winner in France last time. Couple of key videos here. I'm going to go to John Blance for the first one. This is the Duke of Cambridge Stakes at Royal Ascot on the straight mile and Random Harvest seemed to run perhaps the race of her life that day. Is that form we can really trust you on? Um, a jury's out, I think, because they went a pretty slow gallop out in front. The horse that won Rogue Millennium, a, it was an incredible win, the win to, to win that the way that she did. Random Harvest has been consistently overlooked in the betting uh, in some of her races. 22 to 1 the Princess Elizabeth, 22 to 1 in this race the Duke of Cambridge Stakes, 28 to 1 in the Falmouth. I think the reverse might be true here. I think she might be a little bit underpriced because I thought it was a slightly flattering performance from her. She'll get to the front, but she's got stalls seven as well which means you'll have to work to get to that position so I think she's opposable. She didn't really shine last time out in the Falmouth mm -hmm. Stakes but this is more her grade. Let's have a look at the next galloping clue. This is the round mile course and distance the Kensington Palace Phillies handicap big field one or two hard luck stories the two Phillies we're going to look at Maddie are the filly who finishes seventh Zenga and the filly who finishes eighth Roma Mist. Not much between them at the line I think you have a sneaking fancy for Zenga here. It'll be a biggish price. I do. I think she can potentially make the frame. She'll be a very big price. Villanova Queen was the winner of this race. And if you look back, 
she was totally out of the traffic and the trouble right on the wide outside flew home with a sweeping late run the opposite was true for Zenga who got all sorts of traffic problems and the same happened in the Pippa Long Stakes with her last time uh, I really like this filly I think she hasn't been able to show what she's capable of just yet but this is a tough race and she's further down for me I'm going to stay with you Johnny Murta sends over an unbeaten filly two from two this Caddo Bell was really good last time and she looks a very strong strong staying filly Yes, which is bizarre a little bit, given that she's by the, the top sprinter, Harry Angel, uh, a really impressive winner of the listed Kuyonga Stakes at Nace last time. Has soft ground form before that on her debut, so won't mind if this rain we're seeing gets into the ground. We've seen Group 1 winners come from this race in the last 10 years. Euro Charlene, Lady Bothorpe, Dream Loper. If any of these are going to go on to win a Group 1, I think it could be her. Ah, We could say the same about the top one, John, Amena. We haven't seen her for over a year since she was a very good sixth in last year's one thousand guineas she keeps having these big entries group one entries all over the place she's missed one or two races because of softish ground what do we make of her after the break well she's a very interesting horse she goes into the numbers for me i can't have can't have the confidence to put her on top but i mean that's uh, one thousand guineas from 2022 cachet prosperous voyage sandrine tuesday these are multiple black type fillies uh, and she ran a really good race against them so she has to be considered what about numbers here? I, I think a few of these exposed fillies are mm -hmm. there to be shot at here. We do have potential improvers on deck. I like Thornbrook. Uh, stole three. She'll get a nice run around. She kept some pretty rarefied companies, a two-year-old. Complete blowout on three-year-old debut this year. You can, you can discount that. Ran a really good race uh, in France last time out in a race where they're unusually for a French group race. They went a pretty solid gallop throughout. She was on the speed. She stuck on well. Uh, William Buick for Joseph O'Brien. I like that angle. Maddie? I'm going for potential over proven form, Graham. I'm going with the five Caddo Bell on top, followed by uh, John's horse that he's mentioned. Nine at Thornbrook, one at Maynard, and four Zenga. Keep your eye on her in future as well. She's got more to give, I'm sure of it. I'm with you on Caddo Bell, number five. I think she's a pretty good filly waiting to happen. Three Roma missed is my idea of a lively outsider here. She was giving Zenga plenty of weight when they were seventh and eighth here in June. And then one Amena, she could be anything, and nine Thornbrook. Five, three, one, nine for the Longines Valiant Stakes. Well, if there's one race you'd like to snag the Quinella in this Saturday at Ascot, it is race four on the card. It's the Moet et Chandon handicap, international handicap. And if you like course form, we have plenty of it here. Let's have a look down the card. Biggles has excellent Ascot form. So does the old favourite, bless him. So does Vafotino. So does Northern Express. Fresh, number 17, start of Orion. The stalls are in the centre. We could get one group. We could get two. We could get three. It is a head scratcher, but we have, I think, three or four very valuable galloping clues here. Let's start. Course and distance, May, not too long ago. It's the Victoria Cup often a very strong guide to this race second is biggles charging home on the near side third is vafotino fifth is safe voyage and sixth is barada who didn't get the best of luck talk us through this maddie and tell me which of this quartet you'd like to see run well this weekend i have two of them in my four graham the winner rebel territory uh, was on his own in the closing stages but just look at biggles the eye was drawn to him he's been shaping really well and he did so here and crucially this is soft ground we're talking about so we know he handles it of course he was an impressive winner in the Bunbury Cup after this won that really cosily for a top class handicap I think he's got lots more to offer keep an eye on the old boy safe voyage we haven't seen him since this really good run he loves soft ground he was operating at a peak of 116 a couple of years ago he's now down to 97 and lots of this form ties in I think he could run quite well as well but of that group you you clearly like Biggles yeah Yes, yeah, definitely. John, let's move to an even more recent clue. This is the Buckingham Palace Stakes, Royal Ascot, just over a month ago. Same course, same distance, slightly different ground. Here we can have a look at the admirable, consistent Northern Express in third, Spangle Mac coming home well for fourth, Bo Pedro, as he often does, running on late for sixth. What do you make of this? Trio. Well, I think they all run pretty well. Northern Express, though, is very consistent here. It doesn't matter what the ground is. Seven furlong races at Ascot. These cavalry charges really suit him. This was a good run as well because they didn't hang around. Uh, they really went quick in the early stages, and he was in the teeth of the gallop the whole way. He stuck on really well. Crucially as well, he's got a high draw. 
Uh, last year was a bit of an outlier. It was low to sort of middle numbers last year. But previous renewals of this race have generally favoured high-numbered horses. It's not an exact science, as we all know. But I think from stall 20 as well, Northern Express. On ground, he hasn't got a problem with either. And he's had a similar preparation to last year too. So I think he's going to have a very, very good chance in this race. Really good analysis from you too. Now let's take a fresh look at this race with Fresh, who's got superb Ascot form. Let's look at this race 12 months ago. Fresh wins. Bless him, runs really well. And we've also got Northern Express, first, second and fourth. Very fine margins, but Fresh, seven furlongs, Ascot, big field is excellent for him. Let's cut from last year to this June. It's the Wokingham handicap, only six furlongs here. And when we have a close look at Fresh, he's doing all his best work in the closing stages for a very good fifth. I'm sure we've pinpointed a few key players here. There are one or two others I'd like to mention, particularly one, more of him in a moment, but John, pick the bones out of this champagne handicap. Well, I do really think that Northern Express is a very good each way bet and he's still an each way price at the moment. To him on top for me, bless him, has got a really good body of work at this venue as well, including last year in a race that wasn't really run at suit. He still uh, sliced through them like the old knife through butter in the latter stages. Star of Orion's run well in this race before and he's got a nice draw too. And I've got old Bob Pedro in there as well. I was, gonna, I thought he was a good thing in the five furlong handicap, oh sorry, the mile handicap a little bit later on in the car, but they've stuck him in here and I think he's got a very good chance as well. So it's uh, eight, five, seven, and 10. Chocks away for Biggles. I can't believe that you've not included him in your selections, John. Yeah, Biggles number three on top for me. I think Northern Express, the eight, can confirm the York form from last time with the seven, Vaffortino. And I mentioned him earlier on, 12, safe voyage. That would be nice to see the old boy run a good race. Maddie, we've got the right stable, the wrong horse here. Rafe Beckett trains Biggles, but he also trains Star of Orion. Blantz clearly fancies him. So do I. This horse was beaten a short head in this very race two years ago, and he came right back to form, winning form at Newmarket last week when he bolted up. He has a small penalty for that, but he's a major chance. I'm going with 17, Star of Orion, 9, Fresh, 14, Baradar, headgear for the first time, and 3, Biggles. Star of Orion in the Moet, a Shondon handicap. Some races, well, they just speak for themselves. Step forward, this weekend's feature. It is the King George VI and Queen Elizabeth Kipco Stakes. It's a mile and a half. Ascot, testing finish, softish ground, 1.25 million runners and riders. It is a stellar lineup. There are seven, count them, seven Group 1 winners in this field, including Bolshoi Ballet, Hookham, Luxembourg, the mighty pile driver, Westover, Emily Up, John Frank and Tory on board, and the dual derby hero, August Rodan. It is a super field, whichever way you slice it. Let's start with Hookham, older horse, excellent Ascot record. This Cumberland Lodge from a couple of years ago. It's an old piece of form, but it shows how good he is at Ascot. Bring us up to date on Hookham because he hasn't stood still. Yeah, Group 1 winner in the 2022 Coronation Cup at Epsom Graham, where he beat Pile Driver. I think that's a really key piece of form for this race. There's so much else going on. And the last time we saw Hookham at Sandown, he defeated the Derby winner, Desert Crown, who is the only notable absentee from this race. And I think he did well to do so. He had to switch twice. He didn't get first run on that horse. He was very speedy and he hadn't ran in such a long time. So how much improvement can we expect from Hookham? The market believes leaves in him this rain we can see falling behind us at the moment and that has been for the last couple of days will be in his favor Owen Burroughs will be delighted given that he can be a bit fragile conditions are going to suit him really well and I think Hookham has got a huge chance a, a big group one glory here John you can't be neutral about Luxembourg what did you make of his second in the Prince of Wales estates Aidan O'Brien thought he was pestered by an American raider is that sufficient of an excuse not for me um, they didn't go overly quick in the early stages of that race either I thought it was a slightly below par run actually he's only run at this trip once Luxembourg that was in the arc last year and actually he was rather unlucky in the run and stayed on pretty well in a fiercely competitive renewal of the race on soft ground so I haven't got him in the numbers I'm wary of him though because I think he, he's an interesting proposition uh, at this trip Pile driver this day last year. It looked a fantastic field. We had Westover, we had Emily Upjohn. They both blew their chances by pulling hard. We had the arc hero, Tokata Tasso, but one horse beat them all, and that was Pile Driver. He did, Graham, and crucially, he's unbeaten over this course and distance. He won the King Edward at this track. The Hardwick last time, connections are saying he'll improve 10 pounds from that effort. Well, he'll be very tough to beat if he does so. 
And he's also just brings a smile to your face. It's a wonderful story um, for lesser training lights, William Muir and Chris Grassick, um, but they can do the job. So can Pile Driver. I think he's going to be firmly involved, but he might find one or two too good. He was quite keen when we last saw him in that Hardwick. Perhaps he'll be more relaxed now he's got that run under his belt. John, I, I wasn't blown away by the Hardwick. He beat Westwind Blows in changing of the guard. Those two horses would be 50 to 1 and 100 to 1 in this race. So is he really good enough? I know he won this race last season, but he got the saloon passage. Everything fell perfectly. I feel Pile Driver has a tougher task this weekend. He has got a tough task, but I think he'll still be in the numbers. I've got him in there as well for a lot of the reasons that Maddie said. Uh, he's won those three really high quality races, two Group 2s and a Group 1 here over the mile and a half. The soft ground shouldn't be a problem either. So uh, I like the three-year-old angle in this race, but I wouldn't be ruling Pile Driver out at all. Frank Editore's final King George, in theory. And he's got a great mount in Emily Up, John. We're going to go back to last October, Champions Day here at Ascot. It was the Phillies and Mares race. This weekend's race is better. But she was dominant here, Emily Up, John. And she has more than held her own. This season, she blew the Coronation Cup field away. And last time out, she ran into a very high-class three-year-old over a mile and a quarter in Paddington in the Coral Eclipse Stakes. I like her chances. I know you like King of Steel, John. He was very, very good for such an inexperienced horse when second in the derby. And in the King Edward the Seventh Stakes, yes, he was an odds-on chance, mm. but he took that chance in great style. He did. It was an amazing performance. They absolutely crawled through that race. I mean, they went considerably slower in the early part of that race than they did on the handi in the handicap on the same card. He went wide. He had to reel off almost sprinter-style sectionals in the closing stages. And for such an enormous horse, I mean, he's a really striking individual. His derby run was really, really good as well. Basically as good as Augustus, uh, Augusta Rodin's uh, uh, performance as well. So for me, I think he's a really, really good chance here. I've got him on top. I think he's a lovely horse. And we still haven't really seen the full potential of him. And if he gets a strongly run race as well, he might be even more dangerous. Maddie, if you like King of Steel, you absolutely have to like his derby conqueror, Auguste Rodin. Here comes the biggest test. It's a strange thing to say about a dual derby winner, but we will find out exactly how good Auguste Rodin is this weekend. Yes, we will. A little bit underwhelming, people thought, from some quarters in the Irish derby last time, but he got the job done. You have to be a very good horse to do that double. Graham, the way I view this race, there's so many star horses. You have to nail your colours to the mast with one particular way of thinking. And for me, I think at the prices, I'd rather be with the older brigade just because we're not quite sure how good those three-year-olds are just yet. They're clearly very good, but this is going to be the hardest task they've faced by a long way so far. Um, but I do think August Rodan will confirm the form with King of Steel. He's done it already. August Rodan, he represents a potential X factor here. If there's a real brilliant one in the race, it might be him. There's one more horse I want to focus on here. It's another of the older horses. It's a horse who blew out when very well fancied for this race last year. It's Westover, but I think Westover has grown up since then. He was good in Dubai, chasing home the mighty Equinox. He was pretty good at Epsom. Yes, he was no match for Emily Upjohn, but he stayed on really well. And he was good in France last time. It was the Grand Prix de saint Clou. Horse he beat Zagre is just a good Group 2 horse, but he gallops on strongly. And I think this test could really suit Westover because he's a very strong stayer. I think we have pacemakers in here. I think Bolshoi Ballet, Point Lonsdale are going to make this a severe test. John, get off the fence here. It's the <laughs> King George. It is a hell of a puzzle. Sort it out for us, please. King of Steel on top for me. I thought that uh, King Edward VII run, yes, against not particularly great three-year-old opposition, but against the clock, it was a phenomenal performance. So I got him on top, Augusto Rodin in there for second, so the three-year-olds to dominate. Pile Driver in for third. And Emily Upjohn, uh, she gets a slightly better run in transit than this time 12 months ago. She'll pick up some place money as well. Two horses who probably haven't got the credit they've deserved for winning Group 1 so far in their career. Hopefully are going to fight out the finish of the King George. Graham, number four, Hookham on top, followed by seven, Power Driver. Ten, August Rodan, he is a star colt, and I'd expect him to be doing his best work late, followed by eight, Westover, who I think you also fancy each way. So deep. How can you be maximum confident? You can't but it's seductive to have a go. I'm going to go with Frankie and the Gosdens and number nine, Emily Upjohn. I think it'll be tight, but I think she can get the better of August Rodan for Ryan Moore and Aidan O'Brien with Hookham and Westover as backup. Nine, ten, four, eight. Good luck, however you play. A vintage King George. Welcome back to Ascot Race 6 this Saturday 
is run in honour of one of the all-time great riders, Pat Eddery. It is the Flexjet Pat Eddery Stakes. Some potential tar star two-year-olds on deck here. Al Musmak looked pretty good here. First time out, Ancient Wisdom has looked very good for Godolphin. Two from two. And further down the card, Rosalian and Sunway are one from one with abundant potential. We have a key galloping clue here. It is number one, John Blantz, Al Musmak, who mm. came to Ascot, knew his job pretty well and battled on nicely. Yep, and they've obviously decided that uh, coming back to Ascot's a pretty good idea here as well. Didn't go a strong gallop in this race. He was sort of mid-division and then has come home really strongly. First two well clear of the rest. Uh, I think it was a very promising run with this race in mind. Again, if you look back at previous runnings of this, you don't want to be too close to the pace. He'll settle up in mid-division and hopefully he'll kind of reel off the sort of finishing kick he yeah, he did there. I think it is significant to note that the second horse behind Al Musmak was five lengths behind a horse called Ancient Wisdom when they met at Haydock. And Godolphin have got a very good recent record in this race, and Ancient Wisdom brings strong credentials. Yeah, Connections won the last two runnings of this. Ancient Wisdom two from two at Newmarket last time. Super imp impressive, really stretched out. Think he's going to appreciate this seven furlongs with the testing finish. Look at his action as well, Graham. He's got that sort of scooping way that he moves. So I don't think the rain will be an inconvenience to the son of Dubawi. Um, the opposite, in fact. I think he's going to be going very close indeed. I do want to mention Sunway. Love it when David Menizier gets a good horse. He knows what to do with them. And this horse, there was a fair bit of hype surrounding him before he won on debut at Sandown. He did so in a quicker time than a horse called Native Trail. We know what that horse went on to do. Um, this could be a really interesting horse. He's a half-brother to Sealyway, the Group 1 hero. Some potential stars in this. Rosalian is a horse who could be pretty good and he looked very promising first time, John. Yeah, that was over six and a half furlongs, so uh, yeah, up to seven furlongs shouldn't be a problem here. He sneaks in for me, it was a pretty good time figure too, so it was a race where there were a lot of legitimate chances. I mean, I'm keen on the Godolphin horse as well, but Rosalian gets in. Give me your numbers. Uh, we're going to go with Ancient Wisdom on top. Maddie outlines how good this uh, the, the stable go in this race. Al Musmak in for second, and then I've got Dancing Gemini, who ran quite well at Salisbury the other day, I thought, uh, given the way the race panned out, and Rosalian in for fourth. Dancing Gemini, I urge people to go and watch that run back because that smacks of a horse who's going to improve by Camelot. He looks a future stayer uh, for the Roger Teal team, but he shouldn't have what it takes to be Ancient Wisdom, the three who is on top. Ten, Sunway, seven, Dancing Gemini, and nine, Rosalian Graham. Are we all in this together? Godolphin, Ancient Wisdom. I think we are. It's number three, Ancient Wisdom for me. I'll be amazed if he's not well up to this standard. Number nine, Rosalian, has ample potential. Likewise, number two, Al Yanabi, who beat a horse who's franked the form at Salisbury. And number 10, Sunway for the Pat Edry, the Flexjet Pat Edry stakes. Two to go on King George Day at Ascot. And race seven is the Betfred handicap. It's a straight mile. Let's have a look down the card. Great to have a Spanish Raider. Number one, Roda Bayo. Probably faces a stiff task, but nice to see him here. Gali is open to improvement. Further down the card, number five, Aku Najla. 2.7 million guineas he cost. And number six, Latam is a key player with number 10, Loughton, a potential improver. Let's cut to the chase here. We all like the same horse. It's Latam. Let's go around the horn with one quick line as to why Latan is a great chance here. Well, I think he's got a very good chance in the sense that um, the two races he's won, he had no right to, given the way they were run. It was an absolute crawl at Newcastle last time. And yes, it was a lineup for a finish, but he did really well to get into it. I think Ryan Moore has seen that. He's given William Haggis a bit of a call. Haggis and Moore combination, very interesting. And uh, Ascot should really suit his style of running. Right. Yeah, he must be William Haggis's dream horse, Latam, because he never wins by very far. But of course, that's advantageous in handicaps like this. Now rated 95, there's more scope for improvement in him. He might give you something to sweat about, though. In short, what they said. Um, he's clearly a well-handicapped horse because he came pretty much from last to first in the slowly run race at Newcastle. From a pound higher mark, he must still be a progressive well-handicapped horse. And Ryan Moore is the cherry on top. One more name we should note in this race, John. Rodabayo, for me, uh, ran really well uh, over in uh, Dubai. And, uh, well, he represents uh, multiple Spanish champion trainer Guillermo Aris Correta Elosegui. Uh, and, easy for you uh, to well, say. it is easy for me to say. Uh, he's got a rating of 104 and a weight of 10 stone 2, which is a bit excessive, I think, possibly. But he's a deep closer and he's got Jamie Spencer aboard. So that'll do for me. Quinella Horse Maddie. I like the sound of Latam and Rodabayo. Uh, Aku Najla, you mentioned, Graham. We've not really been able to see what he can do. Smart pedigree, as you'd hope, given his price tag. I think he can make the frame as well. 
I will lose money if that Spanish horse hits the frame here. I think he has a very tough task. My numbers in a moment. I know it's Latam on top, John, but what about the one, two, three, four? Yeah, I'm going to go with Latam, the six, Roda Bio in for second. Garley, I think, might get a nice run out in front. There's not a huge amount of pace on in this race. And Mr. Mistopheles has been in completely the wrong place in his last two World Pool appearances, hoping this time he's going to be nicely positioned in the run and could go well at a price. Latam, the six on top for me, followed by one, Rodabayo, five, Aku Najla, and ten, Loten. Number two, Gali, could be second here. Number four, Empire State of Mind, could be third. And number eight, Spirit Catcher, could be fourth. But number six, Latam, looks one of the most interesting handicappers on view this weekend. We're all going for Latam in race seven. Let's wrap things up on King George Saturday at Ascot with race eight, tough sprint handicap. It's the Whispering Angel handicap. Plenty of recent winners in the field here, including Bond Chairman, including significantly Rhythm and Hooves, Royal Ascot success, the big board, proven Ascot performer, and Isle of Lismore, emphatic at Newmarket recently. We have three galloping clues here, interesting ones. Let's start with Royal Ascot. It is Rhythm and Hooves with the big board well behind in the Palace of Holyrood House. And this looks like a horse who's very well suited by being held up in a strongly run race, John. Yep, and he should get a pretty uh, solid gallop here as well. And uh, he blitzed them in the closing stages. It was a really tremendous performance. First two well on from the rest. Uh, the big board was probably a bit too close to that early strong gallop. Uh, but I like Rhythm and Hooves. Yes, the handicapper is sharp with the old pencil. Uh, but I think this race is absolutely ideal for him and uh, he's going to take some beating. The big board came out of that Palace of Holyrood House course and distance it was a bit of a messy race and she had a clear shot at it but there's no question she's a useful filly and that was quite an impressive effort Graham I like the way that they all stretched in the in the closing stages I think there's more to come um, but for me I'm a big fan of significantly who's another course and distance winner here number seven for the Julie Camacho team we know what they've done this season uh, a winner off a higher mark than this over that course and distance and this time he's got Ryan Sexton's three pound claim as well Really nice winner last time out at Haydock, all on his own on the near side rail. Stayed on really nicely to win. Connections do really well with these horses from other yards. I think there's an awful lot to like about him. It's turned the clock back to this day, this race, 12 months ago. Two key horses, Call Me Ginger and Bond Chairman. Call Me Ginger, a very strong finish under the tiny lightweight apprentice Amy Woff. Bond Chairman ran very well for fourth. They come here with different profiles 12 months on. Uh, Call Me Ginger disgraced himself last time here at Ascot. He wouldn't go in the stalls in the big boards race. Bond Chairman is back in really good form after a Doncaster win. But let's cut to the chase here. What about numbers and the most likely winner in race eight at Ascot? Well, just going back to that race, I think Bond Chairman might reverse the form with Call Me Ginger. I've got Bond Chairman in the numbers. Uh, but for me, Rhythm and Hooves, confident selection on top. Obviously, yes, has gone up in the weights, but I think he'll go very well indeed. Uh, I also like the big board. He'll go well. In between those two, though, I've got Rock Melody, who comes down here from the Jim Goldie yard. William Pyle taking off the seven pounds. Very lightweight on his back. Really likes the, the, way, or this, the way this race will be run will suit this horse. So I think Rock Melody in there as well and I've also got Bond Chairman he tried to match motors with two very very fast horses in this race last year a slightly more conservative ride I think I'll see him go much better this race is a real tongue twister isn't it um, hard to get your teeth into it but number seven significantly for me is on top rhythm and hooves he shouldn't mind this ground either the eight then another recent winner 11 Isle of Lismore nine the big board rules out the top four for me Graham John Blance, you were so right to highlight this rock melody. Lots of attention will be on last year's winner for Jim Goldie, Call Me Ginger, but Rock Melody is a really consistent, progressive filly. I love the addition of William Pyle's seven pound claim. Big Jim Goldie to score again in the nightcap at Ascot with Rock Melody, 15, seven, 11 and eight. Good luck. Hi again, welcome back to Ascot. This is a segment we call BRBBL, Big Race, Best bet and long shot. I'm going to start with the King George, naturally. The big race of the summer here at Ascot. John Blance, it's a really tough puzzle, but you like the younger brigade, don't you? I do, yeah. I think King of Steel, it was a tremendous performance in the King Edward, King Edward VII stakes. Certainly if you're a clock watcher like I am, he's got to go in there. His derby run was really good as well. He's a real brute of a horse as well. He was towering above his rivals in that King Edward VII stakes. So King of Steel with a three-year-old allowance for me. Older horses for you, Matty? 
Yeah, King of Steel, he is one of the best looking horses I've seen in the flesh in a long, long time. Um, but for me, it's Hookham. We don't see him very often, but when we do, he makes it worthwhile. Group one winner, proven performer. These are his conditions. I think he can enjoy his day, hopefully in the sun and not in the rain, but he won't mind the ground either way, Graham. Hard to have maximum confidence. But Emily Upjohn has never been better than she is right now. She also has Frankie de Tory on board. I'll go for Emily Upjohn, win and place in the King George. Now, let's go for best bet and long shot. And John Blance, I believe those two are rolled into one for you. Well, you know how I like to fly in the face of convention, Graham. Uh, Northern Express for me in the Moen Shandor handicap. Uh, he would be a decent price. He's got a lovely draw. He's got really good form in two races of this nature uh, here at Ascot. And it was a really good run in the Buckingham Palace Stakes last time out. Well, two starts ago. Last time out at York. Good effort as well. He's primed for this. Maddie, two from you, please. Best bet and long shot. Yeah, I think Northern Express is going to run well, but I also think significantly in race eight is going to run really well. I've made the case for him. He's just got the right profile, Graham, and that's what we need in these handicaps. And in terms of next best, Caddo Bell in race three. I think she could be potentially a merging star for Johnny Murta. Ancient Wisdom, race six, is my best bet. I've seen him twice. Really good looking horse. I'll be really surprised and disappointed and poorer if he's not good enough to go close in a race like this. And the long shot comes in the Moe Chandon handicap. It's Star of Orion, just beaten in this race two years ago, right back on song. Ancient Wisdom, Emily Upjohn, Star of Orion. If those three win, it really will be a champagne King George Day. Thanks for joining us. John, thanks for all your insight. Likewise, Maddie. Whatever you back this weekend, enjoy the sport. It's going to be a wonderful day for King George Day here at Ascot.